Our man looks to be of South American descent. <laughs> what? What's up, you beautiful people? And hey, if you're a law dog, thanks for being here. You know who I you know who I'm talking to? I'm talking to you, law dogs. Uh, well, you know what? I'm going to do another React video. Why? Because you asked for it. You asked for it in the comments, so I'm going to give you some more. You, you apparently like it, so why not do some more? This one's going to be CSI Vegas Season 1, Episode 3. Let's see what they got to tell us. Good. So now we get to play hide and seek? Well, this isn't going to help. There's not enough DNA on the dog's teeth to run through CODIS. There's only 2,000 base pairs here. Mm, 2,000 Jews are not enough to make an ID. Okay, that is true. Um, usually it needs several thousand STRs, what they call them. They're called the uh, short tandem repeats is what, the, is what the STRs stand for. Now, CODIS is the, you know, combined DNA index system. That is national, it's, it's in the United States. And that's where you put missing person DNA, you put convicted offenders in DNA, cold case stuff, any kind of DNA you want to put in this CODIS system, because if you get a hit later on, as you probably know, then you can point to a, a suspect. So there's certain STRs that have certain, you know, base strands in them, and you need a certain amount to run a, a, an exact CODIS profile. Now, different, depending on what you're trying to run in CODIS, depends on how many, uh, you know, base strands that you need, but several thousand, that's pretty accurate, so. The prediction about phenotype from a sample this small? You're in my kitchen now. Let's go deeper in the DNA. You're looking for a male suspect, and the telomeres suggest that he is not a spring chicken. <laughs> and don't look at me, I didn't do it. <laughs> Our man looks to be of South American descent. What? What? Okay. This genetic phenotyping it is the analyzation of physical characteristics and behaviors of somebody, right? This doesn't happen with a piece of software like this. Now, maybe it does. I mean, maybe it does. I've never seen it. I've never seen it or heard of it or read about it. Maybe it's something brand new, but I'm not so sure this is accurate that do it, it, it this fast. If you've seen it, make a comment below and show me where this piece of software does genetic phenotyping in um, eight seconds. I don't think so. What was your favorite video game growing up? Uh, Solitaire. What? I like to read. There's no excuse. Tight end, short stuff, ends up. I have no idea what any of those games are. I'm probably dating myself as far as age, but I have no idea what those are. Comment below if you know what those are, because I have no idea. Zelda. Hey, that abrasion below her hairline. Rip that off my neck. My heart rate's spiking. Somebody was raging. Let's find out who. Okay, so what did you witness there with the smoke kind of coming up onto the fingerprint? <laughs> that is commonly used to, we call it fuming, fuming a print. And what you do is you take whatever, it's usually a non-porous um, piece of evidence like glass or plastic. You put that in a sealed container and then you seal it. But in, before you seal it, you put in there some super glue. Uh, cyanoacrylate is the common, you know, the, the forensic term for it. So you put this, we're gonna call it super glue from now on. So the, you put the super glue in there, you heat it to between 80, 85 degrees until it starts to fume. Well, that fume goes across and it settles uh, where there's fingerprint residue and then it adheres to the fatty acids or amino acids and that are left from the residue of your fingerprint. And it creates us white kind of hard polymer on that that you can then photograph, you can take uh, fingerprint lift tape put it on there, lift it, and then you can analyze it, run it through um, fingerprint databases. So that's what that little clip was there for. So commonly used, pretty easy to do. I might even do a video on, on how to do it. So let's continue on. No, 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 no. Angle's still wrong. Okay, so 
Um, you didn't see it earlier in the episode, but there was no forensic value in that at all. But this lady got stabbed and she fell in a water fountain and they pulled her out. She had a bunch of stab wounds on her. Um, so they are following up and doing the reconstruction on this, which is pretty accurate. I mean, um, having a pool victim found in water, they're doing a, they're doing a great job. So let's, let's continue to watch this. Okay. Mm. And I haven't gotten a decent scratch in either. Okay. These, these came from the fountain, him on top of her, but these two. What if she punched him before they hit the water? If he stopped. Okay. Very accurate on the reconstructions that I've been a part of. Um, you usually have the autopsy report. You have all the reports. You're trying to look at all of these to do a reconstruction. So they're looking at the autopsy report that the medical examiner has identified as a stab wounds, the depth, the angles, uh, so on and so forth. It looks like they took a page out of that, blew it up. And now they're trying to figure out, um, the cause of the stab wounds. Now you're not going to be able to usually identify the order in which those happen. That's pretty difficult to do. But if there's ones on sides, can they figure out how to do that? So let's see how they figure this out. So. <gasps> I am <laughs> so sorry. Did I hurt you? <laughs> no. <laughs> not, not really sure whether that has to do with the reconstruction to slap slap your partner, but uh, it does put some it does put some humor in the show. You know what? I think. Uh, I think your video game would be Street Fighter. Never heard of that either. How many cricket plays do you know? Okay. So let's hope these, uh, and usually wouldn't use some hard chop objects going at it that hard, probably rubber or something like that. Not necessarily the, you know, exact replica. It looks like these um, were done like a 3D printer. So um, those are gonna be pretty, pretty, pretty hard and you don't want to hurt anybody when you're doing these reconstructions, at least I never did. Uh, Say he did tumble back mm -hmm. like this, though. Stabbing gun from here, he'd hit her leg, but that's not it. It. Oh. Okay, that's what it was. So I am losing blood. I'm grabbing whatever's closest. Huh? Left forearm. That's where it'll be. Yep. Ben and I. Okay, so. Um... Pretty realistic. Uh, the reconstructions we've done, we've done usually with models where if we're at a PD or someplace like that, we're getting somebody the same height, weight um, to uh, try to identify that as some similar weapon if we can. And we are just walking through the process and how these things can happen. You're trying to reconstruct it because you weren't there. So you're doing the best job that you can with the evidence that you have. So them walking through this role playing this super common and super legit, I would say. Not doing Hawaiian again. Okay. Nothing related to this, but Hawaiian pineapple on pizza, not pineapple on pizza. Put it in the comments. Just curious on what you guys think. So I ripped my OCL senior year. And I had to relearn how to walk. That was a real education. No. What we have here is a wire frame of our killer skate from the ATM footage. And we're comparing his tribe model to what? People walking around at a company party? I had killer. It's always nice when you have somebody filming uh, outside of the norm and you get all this great footage, like every person that's going on a step and repeat, you're getting there walking and it's back far enough. Someone just leaves the camera there all day for people to film. I mean, that's always awesome evidence, right? Lily sent me some footage. The employees sound like a good place to start. No two humans move the same way. Anthropometric differences in our feet our hips, even our toes. It all lands up to locomotion that is unique as a fingerprint. Okay, so Ben Miller. So everybody, even though it's not fully understood and still kind of being researched, uh, everybody has their own distinctive walk or a gait. And that takes into account your skeletal structure, your muscle strength, your flexibility, your neurological system, sensory systems, all of that. Combine that all into one and you get an individual walk or gait. Now, um, there are systems that apparently um, great systems like CSI has here to automatically do that for you. I've never seen them or used a system like this, but I know that you're they're able to do that. I, so, you know, it is accurate that everybody has their own walk unique gate. 
but having a piece of software that's going to, you know, compare the two and match. I never used one, but it's pretty cool if it is. Is this why I'm here? No. This is. Do you recognize this guy? Yeah, of course. That's Ben. No, that's you with a Ben Miller mask right after you killed Sandra King. That's... I had nothing to do with this. Actually, you had everything to do with it because oh, we found no. your crispy mask that you buried on your mom's property. Okay. So you wore if a Sandra's mask. Sandra's killer wore a mask. And it could have been anyone. Wrong again, because the buccal epithelial cells we found in the mask are yours. Mama Keen's propane torch didn't burn hot enough to destroy the mask. You couldn't turn it to ash, so you buried it. That was a mistake. Buccal epithelial. So, uh, have you ever heard the term buccal swabs, right? That's when you take the, and you probably, the COVID, right? I mean, that's what they, well, COVID, they did the back of your throat, but these buccal swabs, you take it the inside of your cheek because it has a, uh, a layer of epithelial cells in there, which contain, they're like a scale, almost like a scale looking like thing. And they protect the inside of your mouth, your oral cavity, protect you for certain bacteria. It's also on your lips as well. And so when you take that swab and you take, the samples, it's very easily accessible and it's easy to get DNA off the buccal epithelial cells. So this guy had the mask on, he's got his saliva working, this breaking down enzymes and collecting that and it's in his mouth and it's inside of the mouth. He thought he could burn it off, but uh, he couldn't. Well, thanks so much for hanging out while I watch CSI at Vegas, uh, you know, on this nice little evening of mine. Hope you learned something. Hope you had a little bit of fun. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so. Hit that smash that little belly thing, too, if you uh, you want to. If you want to watch another episode of a breakdown I did, here's another one. I think it's CSI episode one, season one of the newest one. So check that out and uh, continue watching. And I break down some more really cool stuff on that one as well. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And always follow the evidence.